What is Silicon Valley? We explore here on The Patriot Founder. What is up and welcome to The Patriot Founder, where we help military vets launch startups and begin careers in tech. So what is Silicon Valley? It's interesting because different people use the term at different times to mean different things which causes a ton of confusion. So what we're gonna do here is unpackage things, starting at the very beginning. The term was originally used by engineers in the South San Francisco Bay Area to refer to the Santa Clara Valley, which had become a major hub for manufacturing semiconductors, a salient material for which is silicon. The term Silicon Valley was widely introduced to the public by a tech writer named Don Hofler, who in 1971 wrote the article Silicon Valley USA, which was a three-part history of the semiconductor industry in Sil <laughs> Silicon Valley, in the South San Francisco Bay Area. It's like, oh well, yeah, it's just Silicon Valley because that's what we call it now. Jeez. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at the context and the history of how it became what it is today and transformed from what were a whole bunch of, you know, apple and fruit orchards to the center of America's tech, really the world's tech ecosystem. Back in 1956, a guy named William Shockley, who would go on to be awarded a Nobel Prize for his work in the development of transistors, went from Bell Labs, the famous legendary tech hub and laboratory in New Jersey out to the West Coast to set up shop to commercialize the things that he had been working on. He set up what was called Shockley Semiconductor Laboratory. Now, Shockley was really good at developing technology, but he was not so strong in the interpersonal relationship skills. And eventually, eight of those people decided that were working with him, said, you know, we've had enough. We're, we're sick of this junk. So they packed up and left. Now Shockley was pissed. He called them the traitorous eight. And to be honest, Shockley Semiconductor Laboratory never really recovered from that loss. Now that organization that those eight people stood up was called Fairchild Semiconductor and itself became absolutely famous and legendary in the annals of Silicon Valley history. Not only was it critical in the commercialization of transistors and semiconductors, but it also incubated talent that went on to start so many different companies across Silicon Valley. So if you've ever heard of Intel, well, that was created by one of those traitorous eight guys. If you have ever heard of the investment firm, Kleiner Perkins, the Kleiner, well, that was one of the other traitorous say. And so many companies across Silicon Valley have been launched by alums of Fairchild. Now, as Fairchild started getting up and off the ground, a certain organization that I suspect all the folks in this community here know and love stepped in to say, hey, you know what? That's pretty cool what you guys are doing over there. We want to help fund you. That organization was the Department of Defense. Why did they have such an interest? Well, those first transistors, those were really helpful for going into things like the B-70, the Minuteman missile system. So they were really eager to see this nascent industry take off and they helped catalyze that industry. There was a major university that was right next door that was helping churn out talent that could fuel these companies and this growing ecosystem of tech that was Stanford. The semiconductor industry continued to take off and became increasingly important, but also new industries were created around it. And it's likely for the foreseeable future that the importance of Silicon Valley will only increase in our lives. Now, whether that's a good thing or whether that's a bad thing is up for debate. Some people say that it is a net negative that so many companies operate so close together and within the same cultural ecosystem, and maybe that's unhealthy. So to pull things back to the present, when used in its original context, the term Silicon Valley didn't refer to other areas such as San Francisco proper, 
the city of San Francisco, which is a major tech hub in its own right. So why then do people refer to companies in San Francisco proper, in LA, in New York, in Boston, Cambridge, or Seattle, or Austin, or wherever, as Silicon Valley companies? The reason is that the term has become a catch-all to describe the tech industry as a whole. Now, it might not perfectly reflect Don Hofler's original meaning, but it gets the point across. There's some people who are sticklers who really care about that stuff, and there are a lot who aren't and just don't care. The name Silicon Valley has become so powerful and so popular that a lot of tech communities in other cities and in other countries have tried to latch on to that a bit. So if you've heard of Silicon Beach, that refers to the tech ecosystem in LA. If you've heard of Silicon Alley, that refers to the tech ecosystem in New York. Silicon Roundabout is the one in London and so on and so forth. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. That helps us with the algorithm and I'll see you in the next video.